Every morning, we wake up rested and recharged from a full night of sleep. At least, that's what we all want. Now that we've waken up, we have a full amount of energy to consume throughout the day, whether it be in tasks, in people, or in different events or activities. So let's imagine that energy to be symbolically represented through the sand grains of an hourglass. Throughout the day, the hourglass is flipped and we consume those sand grains of energy. Now, with that concept in mind, it becomes very important to be very wise and very aware into what we're spending our energy. Because, of course, we don't want that energy to go in vain. So keep that concept in mind and we'll give you more tips at the end of the episode on how you can preserve that energy. Welcome to The Positive Living, a new episode with you in the last 10 days of Ramadan. So we really want to concentrate this episode, what shall we do in our last 10 days in the fasting and in our Ramadan with the relation to diabetes and other uh, conditions that we have. So the first 20 days has passed and now we have the last 10 days, which probably some of us might feel exhausted, might feel tired and we'll have the differences in the sleep pattern that comes in the next 10 days. So what is really important that when we are focusing about our diabetes, we focus also about our sleep because we know sleep and type 2 diabetes are highly related. So what did the science has shown us about sleep and diabetes? Well, we know if you sleep less hours than eight hours per day, then you have an increased risk of diabetes and it also will lead to the metabolic control of your diabetes, that's your blood sugar control, your blood pressure will become less controlled. So it's really important that how we're going to regulate our sleep and so to help our diabetes, not only our diabetes, but also related to obesity. Many people do not put this into action and not thinking really, how is the sleep can really affect me and increase my weight? So now we come to the difficult days where we know our sleep patterns are very changing because we have different prayers, we have the taraweeh, we have the jiyam, and we have also you know, the social gatherings and the rest of the last 10 days. So what have the science shown us? If we sleep less than eight hours per day, then you know, the hippocampal area, that is the most important area in your memory for you know, concentrations and for your memory, get less. So you will have a cognitive decline and also it might stimulate your appetite. So you'll always feel hungry. And when you feel hungry, you will have this idea of really wanting to reach the high fat food when you're feeling sleep deprived. So it's important that we regulate our sleep, get enough, a minimum of eight hours, so we can control the diabetes, the blood pressure, the obesity, and many other factors that is associated with the diseases. So how am I going to regulate my sleep, you know, when we're having the full circadian rhythm, that is your rhythm inside your body, that's your body clocks, getting switched as we're switching our days from the mornings to nights. And how can I still get my enough sleep and get my circadian rhythm? well controlled and that's one of the most difficult things that the scientists are looking at during Ramadan how the circadian rhythm changes how is my biological clock changes and what effect will it have on my diabetes on our control on blood pressure and on our cognitive decline concentration feeling energetic and on our body weight what we have done in this one, we have done a few studies that looked at just been published and that I'll speak more about it after the break. Stay tuned.
welcome back. So it's all about sleep, Ramadan, last 10 days, how we're going to sustain all our activities. Well, it's the, you know, it's one of the best months that we can get our body. As science has shown us, you know, time-restricted feeding, intermittent fasting can all lead to diabetes improvement and many other diseases improvement. Intermittent fasting has been shown to be positive in weight control and it has been shown positive in some cancer research as well. So Ramadan, it's all about, you know, intermittent fasting or what even we call it more in science, time restricted feeding because we are actually restricting the time of feeding and only allowed to eat about eight hours of the day and we have to restrain from fasting food for at least 16 hours and that's what the, all the new science is showing the positivity of the time restricted feeding to your diabetes control to your also weight control and to some diseases that has been shown in an evidence-based medicine what this man has shown uh, that you know and during ramadan studies has shown that the diabetes and the distress and depression has improved during Ramadan fasting. So it's an opportunity for us when we're spiritual that it will help us to control our distress, to control our anxiety, and it will control our depression. It's all about also, what do I do with my medication? How I'm gonna control my sleep in the last 10 days during the Ramadan? And that is what we need to focus on as well. That is, you know, uh, getting enough sleep and getting enough water is important and really getting the most use of the intermittent fasting and the time restricted feeding during the last 10 days. Please do not forget your water intake. We might feel tired, exhausted, and you do not drink enough water. So make sure that you have a measured water because we will all forget uh, that to consume our water. So you have to have the measured water intake. As you know, the hot, it's a hot weather, so we're at increased risk of kidney stones, and that's why it's important that we increase our water intake and have the measured cups with us during the water intake for the last 10 days with exhaustion. We might feel tired that we will always feel that I want to have the high energy, high density food, but it's a sign of appetite that you're actually thirsty and you're not hungry. So again, please, you know, make sure that you have consumed enough water. Exercise, please do not feel that I am too exhausted that I don't have time for the exercise. It's all about healthy living and exercise is an important part also to control your diabetes, your blood pressure, depression, and your weight. So, you know, we do not want to gain weight in the last 10 days or if we gain some weight, it's probably the opportunity now to get rid of it and to keep it off for the next few months during the summer because now it's the summertime we're gonna be preparing for summer holidays so enjoy the last 10 days of ramadan and happy healthy living in ramadan have you ever realized how certain people or certain circumstances completely drain you they exhaust those sand grains of energy that we spoke about earlier. Now let's imagine those people and those circumstances or events to widen the neck of your hourglass. They drain those sand grains, they consume your energy much faster, and you're exhausting that energy in things or people that are in vain. So instead, fill your lives with people whom fill you up with positivity, with events that you are passionate about, because these restrict the neck of your hourglass, and so you can wisely spend that energy of your hourglass. 